Welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. My name is Danny Rocks. In today's lesson, I'm going to introduce you to pivot tables. For those of you who are curious about pivot tables but really don't know what they are, here's how I explain it to some of my clients. Take the knowledge that you already know about creating subtotals and combine that with the information that you already know about how to create auto filters for your information and a pivot table will take it to another level. As with subtotals and with auto filter, we begin with data that is organized into fields, into columns, with a clearly defined field header list or column list. With one active cell selected, go to data and choose pivot table, pivot chart report. Now, honestly, we could just click finish but we'll follow each of the three steps because we're going to take the defaults. Step number one, we are using as our source data that is organized in a list or a database. Next, where is the, uh, the limits of the database? Since we already have the headers defined and there are no blank rows, no blank columns, we can trust Excel to have clearly um, cr uh, properly selected the data list. Our final step is to say, where do you want to place your pivot table report? On a new worksheet, which is the default, or place it somewhere perhaps alongside our data list. Let's take the default new worksheet, finish, and now here's where people go just a little bit crazy. Let's break this down to make this uh, easily understood. Over here in our pivot table field list, we have our column headers, our field labels. Now let's take one, for example, territory, and place it over here by dragging it and dropping it into the row. If you're not happy with that, we can simply select it up here and drag it off. We're back to our blank template. This time, let's try the territory up in the column. Well, let's give that a try. Now we can create our pivot table. We don't have to select each one of the fields as we would with an auto filter or a subtotal. Rather, we'll just take the sales and drop it into the data. And there we've created a pivot table. Again, we can move very easily. If we want to move the territory field from a column orientation to a row orientation, we simply drag it and drop it. It's that simple. If you're familiar with Control Z to undo and Control Y to redo, this is a great way to decide, do I want it in a row or do I want it in a column? Let's go back and have it in a row. Next thing to point out with the pivot table, all of our numbers come unformatted, even though they were formatted in our original source data, because the numbers were n that we have in a pivot table will not stay, as we know, in that same cell because we are going to be moving them dynamically. So here's an easy way to format your numbers. In this case, double click on the sum of the year to date sales, which is, which is Excel's uh, default function to sum. Click there. In this dialog box, locate the number button and then choose, if you want, currency and zero decimal points. And there we go. When we click OK. Now our numbers are formatted. So if we move them to another orientation, the numbers stay formatted. OK, let me show you a couple of other things about pivot tables. Besides not being limited to having to select each one of our fields, we can select a field twice. So unlike a subtotal, which makes it hard for us to see on the same plane or the same row, a sum of our values as well as an average, we could do that with a pivot table. We just pick the year to date sales, drop it in again. Now again, the new one that you see is unformatted. So we can do a couple of things. Let's just click here with our right mouse click and go to the field settings. This looks very familiar, doesn't it? Now what we're going to do, we want to see average. So we're going to change the summarize for our second year to date sales to average. And now let's make a couple of cosmetic changes to the name. So we'll make it average year to date sales. And now let's format the number. Find the number button. Let's choose currency. Let's say zero decimal points. Click OK. Click OK. And if we want to change the name of our sum, right mouse click, field settings, all we're going to do is just say sum. 
we'll get rid of the of make it just a little bit cleaner click OK and there we are now we do have a floating toolbar I'm going to just point out one feature of the floating toolbar in this lesson if we want to hide the field table list we can either click close and if we want to bring it back we select show the list we can also hide the list this way the toolbar will only appear when we have a cell selected inside our pivot table once we move out of that our field table goes away and our pivot table is dimmed so we have to actually have a cell in there selected okay let's just move one more orientation around here we have the regions and we can filter them so if I wanted to only see, let's say, the Mid-Atlantic and the Great Plains and the Southwest, there's my filter, which you already know how to do. We can bring this back by saying Show All and OK. Now, let's say that we want to see the orientation in a slightly different manner. What if we want the territory to be up there in a final total. Well, that's OK, but not quite what we're looking for. Control Z to undo it. How about this? Let's move our data and we'll move our data to the left of the territory. And now we have clearly defined our sum for each one of our regions and our average for each one of our regions. And again, we can filter it if we want to select those regions that we want or bring them all back. Dynamically being able to rearrange your data is a great feature for a pivot table. We'll teach you more in our next Tips and Time Savers.